Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Matthew Varga here. In today's video, we are gonna go over the crazy world of stock markets. So I get asked a lot of questions about investing in stocks for beginners, so I thought it'd be a great idea to do a sort of stock investing 101 video. I know the world of the stock market can seem pretty crazy, so I think it's a good idea to give you guys some base knowledge so you can start to feel confident and comfortable when it comes to investing in the stock market because I think it's a very important part of everyone's financial plan. And then later on in the video, we're actually gonna jump onto a trading platform and we're gonna buy and sell a couple of stocks so you can see how that works. If you're new to this channel, this channel is all about teaching you how to gain financial independence and retire early. Whether you're looking to do that with index funds or Airbnb or even the traditional buy and hold real estate, we've done all of these different strategies over the last few years and it's helped us retire in our 30s. If you're looking to gain more financial freedom, then make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And also follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I post more daily videos and updates about our investment journey. When you think about the stock market, what's the first image that comes to your mind? Maybe you think about the New York Stock Exchange, the old days on the trading floor where people are yelling and screaming over each other trying to get their trades put in. Well, the truth is, is that nowadays investing in stocks could not be easier. You can do it from your home office or you can even do it from your phone while you're watching TV with your kids. But before we get into that, let's just do a breakdown of what exactly a stock is, what is the stock market, how does it work, how are prices determined in the stock market, and how we can use that to help us make money in the stock market. So what exactly is a stock? You've probably heard people talk about buying stocks in a company or buying shares in a company. Well, the term stock and share tend to be used interchangeably to mean the same thing. A stock or share is a small piece of ownership in a company that has gone public and that small piece of ownership entitles you to some basic rights like rights for voting and also the ability to share in the growth of that company. So for example, if you own a share of Tesla, you actually own a small piece of Tesla. So when a company decides to go public, that just means that the company has decided that instead of being owned by one private individual or a group of individuals, they've decided that anyone in the general public can own a piece of that company by buying a share or stock of that company. When a person owns a share of a company, they have two ways that they can benefit from this. We have capital gains and we have dividends. Capital gain is when the value of that stock that you own in that company goes up in price. So for example, if you bought a share of Apple today for $100, and let's just say tomorrow that same share is worth $110. Well, you've made a $10 capital gain because you bought it for 100, you can sell it to someone else today for 110, so you've made a $10 capital gain on that stock. The other way that a person can benefit from owning stock in a company is called a dividend. So a dividend is not paid by every company, that's important to know. It's usually paid by bigger, more established companies like your Coca-Cola, your Walmart, you know, your Johnson & Johnson. And what a dividend is, is it's that company giving to its shareholders a percentage of the profit that that company's made in that year. So for example, if Walmart has a great year, sells a ton of stuff, makes a lot of money, they actually pay out a percentage of that revenue to everyone that owns shares in that company. So by owning stock in the company, you can benefit from capital gains, you can benefit from dividends, or if it's a really great company, you can benefit from both capital gains because it's going up in price and you're getting paid a dividend at the same time, and that's the best of both worlds. So now that you know exactly what a stock is, you can probably see that it's not that complicated once it's broken down into an easy to understand concept. So the next thing that we need to look at is what is the stock market? Now there are hundreds of books out there that you can read if you really wanna dive deep into the inner workings of the stock market, but we're not gonna go that deep into it. We're just gonna give you a nice basic understanding of what the stock market is. So to put it simply, the stock market is just a place that people go to buy and sell shares of these publicly traded companies. Now that could be individual investors like you and me, that could be institutional investors, so larger investment firms, or that could even be companies that are buying and selling stocks of other companies. So let's say for example that you wanted to buy some shares of Microsoft. You go onto your trading platform, you select Microsoft and you hit the buy button, you are actually buying that stock from someone else, like another investor like me, you're not buying it from Microsoft itself. 
So now that you have a better understanding of what the stock market is, another term you might have heard is what's called the initial public offering or an IPO. You might have heard this on the news or heard people talking about it. And really what an initial public offering is, it's when a company decides to go public for the very first time. Normally a company would do this as a way to raise a large amount of capital so they can continue to grow as a business. Now the whole process of going public for the first time is obviously a lot more complex than what I just said there. It involves lawyers, accountants, investment firms, all this crazy stuff. But it's good to know these terms because it is something that you're going to hear on the news or you're going to hear people talk about. So it's important to know what an IPO is. Another important thing to know is just because a company has done an IPO doesn't mean that they're not going to have uh, at later on periods of time, release more shares to the public. So just because you've sold an initial batch of shares as your IPO doesn't mean that you're not gonna you know, sell another batch later on in the future to grow bigger or to fund something else. So these are all important things for you to know about how the stock market works. If you wanna take a look at a company that went public this year in 2021, you could take a look at Rivian, which is an electric vehicle company. There was a lot of hype about this public offering. So you can take a look at that stock and just see, okay, well, like what happened when the stock went out on the very first day? It spiked up, it came back down, it leveled out. So this just gives you a better understanding of how things work. Uh, so it's always good to do that research and just see what goes on. The next important thing we wanna know is how are prices determined on the stock market? There are a lot of factors that go into determining the price of a stock on any given day, but the major factor is supply and demand. On any given day, there is a maximum price that a person is willing to pay to buy a stock, and there is a minimum price that a seller is willing to sell that stock for. You can almost think of the stock market like an auction where you've got buyers who are bidding on stocks that sellers are willing to sell. So if there's a lot of demand for a stock, that demand is gonna drive the price of that stock up because people really wanna own a share of that company. And on the other side, if there's not a lot of demand, they're gonna have a lot of sellers who are trying to get rid of that stock and not a lot of buyers, so that's gonna drive the price down. So the stock market is really no different than the real estate market. When you've got a hot area that has a lot of demand that people wanna go in, move into, you're gonna get a lot of buyers coming in, they're gonna bid the prices of those houses and those properties up, and that's the same thing that happens in the stock market when you get a company that's doing well and it's hot you're going to get all these people who want to jump in get on that bandwagon and it's going to cause the demand for that stock to go up which is going to drive that price through the roof now that's a bit of a simplified example of how the stock market works there's obviously more complex things going on behind the scenes and other things that play a part in how the price of a stock is determined such as fundamental analysis the economy and how that's doing and also just general psychological factors of the investors so for fundamental factors one of the key things is the earnings reports which go out every quarter now obviously when a company releases its earnings it's going to have an impact on the price of that stock whether it's going to go up or down so if a company is doing well earned a lot of money it should drive the price of that stock higher because it's performing well that's how things should work, but of course, the stock market doesn't always work that way. So even if a company releases a good earnings report, you'll see that the value of that stock can still drop down if it didn't quite reach certain expectations or was just a little bit shy or not high enough on the earnings report that people thought it was gonna be. So just because it does well with some of the fundamental factors doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to actually move in the logical way that it should. Next up, we have the economy. Now that can have a major impact on the stock and the stock market itself. So unemployment rates, interest rates, uh, if there's any conflicts with any country. So all these things can help determine how the stock market's doing and how individual stocks are doing. So for example, if the unemployment rate happens to be high or it's reporting higher than expected, that can have a negative impact on the stock market because people think, okay, well, if we have high unemployment, it means that less people have money, so people are gonna spend less money on buying things, which means that the value of these stocks are gonna drop. So that's just one of the examples of how the economy can have an impact on the stock market and individual stocks as well. And then next we have just basic human emotions such as fear and greed. Now I think this is the part of the stock market that can frustrate a lot of people and kind of keep people away from investing in the stock market because like I said before, even though things should move a certain way based on logic, that human emotion 
uh, can sometimes make things go in just a crazy different direction. So it can definitely be a frustrating part about investing in the stock market. But if you're investing in good companies that you like, you've done your research and you know that it's something that you want to hold for a long period of time, then those fluctuations that you get from that crazy human emotions shouldn't really have a big impact on your investing. So next up we have what exactly happens when you buy a stock. So in just a few minutes, we're gonna jump onto a paper trading account and I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like to buy and sell some stocks on a trading account platform. But before we jump into that, I just wanna give you a bit of an idea of what goes on behind the scenes when you're buying stocks. In order to buy or sell stocks, you need to have a brokerage account set up. If you don't know what a brokerage account is, then you should definitely go watch my investing 101 video because I go over that in a lot more detail there so you can have a better idea of how to get this set up so that you can actually purchase and sell stocks. As an investor, you must buy and sell stocks through a brokerage and a brokerage is really just a company that's licensed to trade stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. For example, we have TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, or the company that I use, Interactive Brokers. Back in the day, a broker was actually a physical person that you had to call up, let them know what trade you wanted to do, and they would then relay that trade down to the stock exchange floor, and a physical person down there would have to try to connect with someone to buy or sell the stocks that you were asking them to do. Now, luckily, today with technology, all of this can be done online, from your phone, from the comfort of your home office, so it's definitely a much better system now. So nowadays, when there's a stock that you want to buy or sell, you tell your broker electronically what stock you want to buy and how much of that stock you want. That order is then relayed to the stock exchange and the market maker buys or sells your shares at the current market price. When you decide there's a stock you want to buy, you tell your broker electronically what stock you want to buy and how much you want to buy of that stock. That trade is then relayed to the stock exchange and a market maker sells you that stock at whatever the market price is. After that trade is done, you've purchased that stock, it lands in your account, and you're now the proud owner of shares of that company. So now that you have a better understanding of how things work when you buy and sell stocks with your broker, let's jump into my account with Interactive Brokers, which is the brokerage I use for all of my trading. If you wanna know more about Interactive Brokers, I'll have a link down below that you can use to go and check them out. I've just found Interactive Brokers to have one of the best platforms that I've found online. They have a great app that you can use, and I've just found their commissions and their trading fees to be some of the lowest in the market. So it's definitely one that I would recommend you check out. This account that I'm gonna use is called a paper account. So it's not my real account. This is actually just using fake money. It's a simulated trading environment. So I can buy and sell stocks in there, but I'm not actually putting any of my own money up on the line. Now, when you get started with investing yourself, I highly recommend that you start with a paper trading account. That way you can learn how the stock market works. You can, you know, test some things out, but you're not actually risking your own money. You're just learning the environment and how things work. And it's a great way to just build that knowledge up, build your confidence up and not actually put any of your money on the line. Once again, if you're looking to get started with investing in stocks, then I highly recommend that you start with a paper trading account make your mistakes in there before you actually put your own money up on the line. Okay, so here we are on the back end of Interactive Brokers. As I said before, it is a paper trading account. So we get a million dollars to play with to start our investment journey. Um, as you can see here, we have you know the home, portfolio, a watch list, trade, market. So these are some of the different tabs that you can take a look at. You know, portfolio, if we actually had positions, it would all be listed right here. So after we buy and sell a couple of stocks, we'll see it here in our portfolio. Watch list, uh, we'll just dismiss that. So watch list, you can actually add stocks that you wanna follow into like one place. We don't have to search that symbol all the time. And then here, trade, if you actually wanna trade stocks, options, whatever it is, you can select that. And then here for stocks, it's just saying add the symbol. So we're gonna look up a couple of stocks here and we're gonna buy some of them and then we'll sell some of them after as well. Now, just a note, none of these stocks that I'm showing you are recommendations by me. Uh, you need to do your own research to determine what companies you wanna buy, but we're just gonna look at a couple of the main companies that you would know and heard of just for ease of, um, for everyone. 
So those are just some of the tabs that you can look at. Let's go back to the home here. Another thing you can do is just up here on the top, we can search for any company that we wanna look at. So here we have Apple. We're searching Apple. We can see the ticker symbol is AAPL, Apple Inc. This is on the NASDAQ. So we're gonna select that option. So here we can see, you know, pretty up-to-date market pricing. Uh, we can see Apple is currently going for $166.32. It's up by $4.48 today. So a good day for Apple if you own some of their shares. Down here we have our chart that you can also look at and you can sort of look out over a five-year period, a one-year period. You can kind of see is Apple trending up or is it trending down? That's an important thing to to look at when you're sort of analyzing a stock. So we can see that, you know, Apple's been having a good year. It's been trending up. It started the year a year ago at 120 and now it's up to 166. So, you know, Apple's been having a good year. It's a good company. Let's say we've done our research. We've done our due diligence. We're like, we like Apple. We think it's a great company. We can go over here and we can see buy, sell, watch list. So let's add this to our watch list you know, we'll just create a new watch list, new. So now anytime we want to look at Apple and just see quickly how it's doing, we can, you know, go over to our watch list and we can see we've got Apple saved there. So let's say we want to buy Apple stock. We're going to go over here and we're going to select buy and we can see, okay, we're going to buy Apple stock. Um, we're going to buy, let's just say a hundred of them for, you know, for ease sake. So we buy a hundred shares of Apple it's $166.25 for each one. Uh, so that would cost us $16,623 on the current price. We can select our order type if you wanna do a limit order, which is just you're sort of setting the, the price that you're willing to pay. So you can kind of set that for the day. Uh, you can put good, to, good till cancel, which basically just means if you're like, I wanna buy Apple at $160, Six dollars, but it's currently above that. You could put in here, you know, a limit order of $166, and you can put good till cancel, which basically means until that price hits that $166, you know, you're not going to buy it at that point. So, but for for today's sake, we're just going to purchase the Apple stock at the market price because we think it's a good it's a good deal. So, let's see here. We've got Apple 166.20. So we're gonna buy 100 shares of Apple at the market price. We've got everything set in. It's always good to double check, make sure, make sure this uh, price hasn't moved that much since you've you know, been putting in your information and looking things over. But we've got 100 shares at the current price and we're just gonna submit buy order. There you go. And then here you can see your order has been filled. So because Apple is, um, a stock that's traded quite a lot, it usually your order will get filled pretty quickly. Um, if there's not a lot of action on a particular stock, it might take a while for your order to get filled, but with Apple, it was filled right away. So we're now the proud owner. If we go to our portfolio here, our positions, we can now see that we own a hundred shares of Apple. Our cost basis is here. This is what the market value is. That's our average price. And it's saying that so far after we made that purchase, it's actually, we've made $14.50. So the price of Apple has gone up a little bit since we uh, created that purchase. So let's just say we wanna take a look at another company that we want to buy. Let's just say Tesla. Uh, I'm a fan of Tesla. So we can go over here. Once again, we can see we've got Tesla the stock. Its ticker symbol is TSLA. And we can see that the market price is $1,009. Once again, we've got our chart here. So we can see five years ago, Tesla was worth $50, $60. And then just boom, it shot up. So if you would have came in on the initial public offering or shortly after and held for this many years, you would have done extremely well. That time has passed. So we are gonna look at the one year chart and we can see that Tesla started the year at 578, give or take. So 
Tesla is a bit more of a volatile stock. You can see like huge spikes up, huge spikes down. Um, obviously over the last few months, it's done quite well. Let's just say we wanted to purchase. We've done our research. We think Tesla's a good stock. We want to hold it for the long term. You know, once again, we're going to click buy and we are going to buy a hundred. So that you can see there, it sets at a hundred, but we could do it at any, we could buy one. If we want it, we could buy one share. We could buy, you know, 20 shares. So let's just say we're going to buy 20 shares of Tesla at the current price, $1,012. You know, so we can, once again, we can adjust our price here to $1,012 and just double check. We're going to do 20 shares, $1,012. Submit our buy order and we can see that it was filled right away as well. If we go back to our portfolio we can see we own 100 shares of apple 20 shares of tesla so that is how you buy stocks that you're interested in you know if you want to sell some so let's just say oh we got our apple shares we've got 100 of them let's just say we want to sell 50 so we can click on the sell button we can switch our quantity to 50 shares and we can see if we we're to sell 50 shares today at the current price one 6629 we're gonna get eight thousand three hundred thirteen dollars uh, so let's sell those 50 shares so the order has been submitted so the price because it moves quite a bit it wasn't filled right away so in that case we can take a look here at trade and we can see we've got you know an order in to sell 50 shares of Apple at $166.29. I see here Apple's, uh, you know, just a little bit lower in price. So no one's picked up this order yet. You can either sit here and wait to see if the price is going to kind of climb back up and someone's going to take it, or we can go in and we can modify this to, you know, whatever the current market price is. So 166 you know, see it moves all the time. So 166.17, let's see if we put that in. Sorry, the internet is a bit slow here where we are. So I just had to do a couple of things, but we can see that I, I ended up adjusting the price down to 166. So the order has been filled. We sold our Apple shares, 50 Apple shares at $166. We can see here that that order was filled. And if we go back to our portfolio, we can now see that we only own 50 shares of Apple and our 20 shares of Tesla. So that's how you buy and sell stocks on the stock market. So as you can see, since we've bought and sold shares today, we're actually both these two shares, uh, both these two companies that we bought have increased in value. So we're actually up $30 today if this was a real trade that we did as you can see it's not that complicated and not that intimidating to buy and sell stocks with a brokerage trading account obviously this is just play money so as i've said before in this video probably a few times make sure that you start with a paper account that way you can learn you can make mistakes you can you know track companies that you want like let's say you do want to own apple one day well you can practice buying apple stocks and watching the stock to see how it goes you know and build your confidence up before you actually purchase any apple stock you know this will give you a better idea of like what price you think is a good price to get in at so these are just a few things to think about when you're uh, you know investing in stocks for today's video i just wanted to give you that basic you know overview of what it takes to buy and sell stocks and as you can see it's really just a click or two of a button. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of just how the back end looks when you're, you know, using a brokerage account. Another great resource that you can check out if you like is called Yahoo Finance. It's very well known. It's a great resource to, you know, just check stock prices to see what's happening in the market, up to date financial news. It's free. You can create a watch list so you can track stocks that you're currently interested in. So a great free resource. I use it. I know a lot of people that use it. 
So make sure you check it out if it's something that interests you. So there you have it. That is my stock market investing for beginners video. I really hope after watching this video, you have a better understanding of how the stock market works, what stocks are, how prices are determined, and just seeing how it's done on the back end. Hopefully it made you feel more comfortable and confident knowing that it's not all that scary. It's not all that intimidating. Anyone can do it. You just need to build up your education. You can set up that paper trading account and learn and make mistakes. I know it can seem overwhelming at first, so I highly recommend that you watch this video a few more times. You check out my investing 101 video and you just continue to educate yourself, read articles, read books, watch YouTube videos, watch more of my YouTube videos and just keep building up your knowledge because it's going to help you feel more comfortable and confident with your investing. I'm going to be adding new videos every week about different types of investments, different investing strategies that you can do. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on that future content. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below with any questions that you might have and I'll be sure to help you out down there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.